HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Welcome to another edition of HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the retiring town treasurer, Maureen Dwinell, was honored and congratulated by many former co-workers. We will take you inside the new temporary Hopkinton Public Library and Hiller's Hockey continued a winning stretch. But first, here are some happenings in Hopkinton you should know about. Did you ever want to be a part of Hopkinton's town government? Well, now may be your chance. Nomination papers are currently being accepted for the below positions. Board of Assessors School Committee, the Board of Health have a position open, while the Board of Library Trustees, the Planning Board, and Board of Selectmen have two seats up for grabs. The Town Clerk and Town Moderator position is also available. To submit your papers, you must have signatures of at least 50 Hopkinton voters, and you must submit your nomination papers to the town clerk's office by March 28th. The Hopkinton school system will be saying goodbye to Assistant Superintendent Robert Burlow. Burlow was appointed Deputy Superintendent for the Wachusett Regional School District this past week. Hopkinton Public Schools released this statement about Mr. Burlow. Quote, Mr. Burlow has made a significant contribution to the Hopkinton Public Schools and will be greatly missed. We wish him well and his future endeavors, knowing that he will bring to Wachusett his deep knowledge, dedication, and sense of humor. Massachusetts Senator Karen Spilka, who represents the 2nd Middlesex and Norfolk District, will be holding office hours in Hopkinton. Constituents are invited to share concerns, questions, or hair updates from the State House Friday, January 29th at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. at the Hopkinton Gourmet over on 43 Main Street. The Hopkinton Marathon Committee honored retiring Hopkinton Police Lieutenant Chuck Wallace. Lieutenant Wallace worked closely with the Hopkinton Marathon Committee throughout his 30 plus years serving the Hopkinton Police Department. Speaking of the Hopkinton Marathon Committee, the Marathon Fund Committee will be awarding six $1,000 scholarships, three to male and three to female high school seniors who are residents of Hopkinton. Applications are now available at the Selectman's Office in Town Hall or in the Guidance Department at Hopkinton High School. Applicants must be attending a two to four year college or university and have earned at least one varsity letter. Completed applications should be turned in to the Selectman's office by April 4th. Town Treasurer Maureen Dwinell retired after nearly 27 years of working for the town. Many current and former members of Hopkinton's town government were in attendance at a retirement party to congratulate Maureen and thank her for all she has done for the town throughout her career. State Senator Karen Spilka was in attendance to thank Maureen Dwinell for her service to Hopkinton and present her a citation from the state. This is a state senate citation um, and it, I'll read it, official citation, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Maureen Dwinell in recognition of the joyous occasion, because it is joyous, yes. for you anyway, of your retirement and your years of dedicated service as Hopkinton's treasurer. The event was hosted by active community member and former Parks and Recreation member Tim Kilduff. Other speakers included former Selectman Dr. John Duffy, current Assistant Building Inspector Mike Shepard, retired Town Clerk Ann Click, former Selectman Eric Sonnet, Town Clerk Jerry Holland, who also retired this year, as well as a number of co-workers from the treasurer's office. 
Town manager Norman Kamalu shared some memories of working with Maureen. I've only known Maureen for seven years, and what I can share with you, there's some comments that I've heard tonight, is that there are people who believe that it takes a village to raise a child. What I've learned in the last seven years <coughs> is that perhaps it may take Maureen to raise a community. On behalf of town hall employees, Maureen, we want to thank you for raising us. We want to thank you for raising us in many ways. You've laid the foundation for the work that we do. Your many years of experience and many years of service and inspiration to all of us. But most importantly, I will never forget those wonderful moments that you and I have spent <laughs> where you have told me, Norman, don't do it. <laughs> You'll be crazy to do that. And then last but not least, Maureen Duenell spoke herself to thank everyone that partook in the event. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Diane Hendrickson, Michelle Broda, Tim Kildow for putting this event together, and to thank the community for putting up with me for 26 years, eight months, and six days. <laughs> Most of all, I want to thank my family who has put up with my career for 26 years, 8 months, and 6 days. <laughs> There's a lot of times that I should have been there and I wasn't because I had to work. But I think I raised them to be the same way because now they can't be there because they're working. <laughs> but I love them all, especially my husband, Red. And I love this community. I was born and brought up here. And my heart will always be in the Hopkinton. Thank you. You can see the full retirement speeches honoring Maureen Dwinell airing soon on an HCAM special called 26 Years, 8 Months, and 6 Days. The Hopkinton Public Library has moved to their temporary space at 65 South Street in Suite 104. The library will be opening this coming week and is located at the 65 South Street location while their home at 13 Main Street is renovated and expanded. Hopkinton residents voted at town meeting in 2014 to allow the library to utilize a $4.5 million state grant to renovate and expand. The library staff recently gave HCAM News a tour of the new space. Hello, um, I'm Rona Hussein. I'm the director of Hopkinton Public Library. And here with me is uh, Heather Backman. She is the adult services librarian. And we have finally uh, relocated the library to 65 South Street, um, Suite 104. Uh, our move uh, has been complete. We're actually ready to ready to go. Uh, our expected opening date, we hope, um, to be day after the Martin Luther King's uh, holiday, which is April 19th. Um, we are very excited to welcome our community to our new space. Uh, it's slightly smaller than what we had, but um, I think it's nice to lay out because um, we have different sections. So actually we have more space for people to use some quiet space or maybe small group discussion or meetings and whatnot. So we are very, very excited. Um, Heather, do you want to talk about what we have? Sure, yeah. The hours to mention. Absolutely, hours, yeah. yeah. Right? We will be open uh, the same hours that we were open prior to moving. So that's uh, 10 to 5 on Monday, uh, sorry, 10 to 5 on Tuesday, Thursday, and 10 to 8 on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and 10 to 4 on Saturdays. Uh, we've brought about 40% of our collection with us, uh, so there's plenty to check out. We've got DVDs, audiobooks, books, we've got plenty of children's and teen things. Uh, we brought our magazines with us and we will still be getting newspapers. So we've got basically everything you used to come to the library for, just a little bit less of it at the moment. But we brought all of our newest things um, and we're still ordering, we're still getting things in, so there's lots to check out and we hope you'll come down and join us soon.
Yeah, and it will be borrowed too. Anything yeah. that we put on storage and um, interlibrary loan, as you know, it's, it's fairly quick. It works really yep. well, so you can borrow here too. So this is our circulation area. We brought the desk with us, which was an experience for the poor movers. Um, and then this is what we've got for our sort of general public space. We did bring two of our public computers uh, for adults with us. Um, into the public space, so that will be um, hopefully something people can continue to use. People really like our computers. And here's what we have for the adult collections. Uh, like I said, we have DVDs and audiobooks and fiction, nonfiction, new stuff. Uh, we just started placing orders again, so there should be new things in by the time we reopen, hopefully. We've got a copy room. We've got actually a small chair to work in in the copy room. We're able to bring our archival materials with us and um, actually because of we've been able to fit them in in an accessible way we'll be able to make them accessible to the public as they were before uh, talking to me or to Linda Connolly who's our archivist about uh, getting in and seeing our archival materials so that's really exciting because we weren't sure we would have any of this available in the temporary space but we do. We have an entirely separate periodicals room so all of our magazines and um, Newspapers and actually also our reference collection are going to be in here. <laughs> this is where we receive orders and process materials and pay bills and anything else administrative that needs to be done. This is our book sale area where we um, sell books for um, a small price and someone can come here and use their laptop and work quietly. So this is the most exciting part, I think, because we never had, this is the, this is a room for young adult, and we did not have this space before, so we're very pleased to be able to create this space for young adults. So we separated their collection, and we are hoping to hire a professional librarian to serve the teens of our community. So uh, we would definitely like them to come and use it and make a recommendation on in our collections and stuff. So we're quite excited about this space. And then I'm going to take you to the children's room. We're really excited to welcome you to the new temporary children's room. Um, we've brought along a good selection of the books that you love and that you can still come and get here. And we hope to offer story time as well. We can use the room in young adult for that. And um, if you'd like to come through, we have our picture books. We also have in the children's room now the um, children's DVDs, um, but picture books, fiction, audio books, mysteries, everything is still here for you. Um, and we've also brought some of our friends that you'll remember that are great favorites of the children up here. All of our little friends from, characters from different uh, children's books are here and uh, some of our posters. We still have some decorating to do and a few other things for displays before we open. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> for more about the library or how you can help with the renovation and expansion project, check our website, hcam.tv. Coming up next on HCAM News, we will get you up to date with Hiller Sports, Courtney will have our HCAM Insider and much more. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hockington. We uh, have an adoption kennel here and we have greyhounds, but we also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org and our phone number is 508-435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time. Just uh, give it a Welcome back to HCAM News. Hiller's hockey ended December red hot, 
winning three straight games, including taking home a holiday tournament championship. Coming into January, the Hillers varsity hockey squad didn't lose a step. On Saturday, January 2nd, the 5-1 and one Hopkinton Hillers hockey team took on Holliston. The Hillers were white hot coming into this game on a three-game winning streak, and the hotness continued. Now square up shot, here's Koshif again, shot oh. the goal! That was a nice pass across the middle of the ice, and he finished it on the shot. Well, the senior Alex Koshif gets the Hillers on the board at the 11.56 mark. But Hopkinton is there to throw it out from to the blue line, but now a tip oh. in in front. That skipped in front, and Holliston scores. A great play by number 14. Koshif wins the faceoff. Now it's taken away. Karpensky backhander, and it's in. Will Karpensky. Karpensky. After, after the Hillers had won a faceoff, went right to the middle of the circle and put a backhander in, and the Hillers lead 2 1. All right, we get ready for second period action with the Hillers leading 2 to 1. The Hillers now backhand a tip and try, and it's in. A tip in in front, and I think Steven Simos got it. It was a nice give and go. Yes. Time a shot save and a goal by Abbott. He got a rebound. Nobody was there for the Panthers to help clear the rebound. And it's tucked back in by Will Abbott. And the Hillers take a 4-1 lead. Nobody bomb shot and he scores. Oh, he wound up. He took almost a full windmill there. And he buried it from just the top of the circle. And the Hillers now lead 5-1. The Hillers get the 5-1 win over Holliston. Five goals from five different players improved the Hillers to 6-1 and one on the season. On Wednesday, January 6th, the Hillers brought a four-game winning streak into a matchup with Bellingham. Pickens takes a shot, and a goal! From the point, it's a power play goal, and the Hillers tied the score at one. And Bellingham still keeps in the bouncing puck on goal, and it goes in! There to get it is Alexander. He throws it up off the board. He tries to hit Boucher. Boucher can't get out. It's a turnover. Now a squared up shot and a goal! Right away, Cam Finlayson scores, and the Hillers have tied it at two. They have somebody back with them. All right, 9.17 to go, second period. Score tied at two. Up the board. Owen Delaney with it. Pinches down. Rolf takes a shot, and it's a blocker save into the corner. Now Vokey. Vokey looking up, tries to turn around, and a shot. A backhand goal by Matt Linquist. It looked to me like Linquist was out in front and threw a backhander after the initial shot, and the Hillers take a 3-2 to two lead. There's a shot and another save, and there's a goal. A put-back goal by Dulak, and he has his 10th goal of the season, and he has tied the game. Tried Linkless there. Linkless uh, throws it out in front. Here's Rolf shot. And a goal! Evan Rolf hits a top roof of the goal and gives the Hillers a 4-3 to three lead. Still has it. Gets to the circle. Takes a shot. The guy, whoa, wide open in front is Dulac. And a save. In front is a shot and a save by O'Leary. Point blank. Have it back here in front. Oh, and a nice pass and a goal by Steven Simos. Oh, what a nice pass by Abbott to Simos, and he roofed it, and Morse had no chance on that goal. The empty net, Mike. Yeah. 50 seconds to Who go. Who doesn't want one of those? Like this to Bokey. Bokey launches it down the ice, and he scores. The Hillers spread the puck around once again as six different players grab goals in this one. A 6-3 victory over Bellingham improves the Hillers to 7-1 overall as they win their fifth straight game. 3-1 Hillers girls basketball took on Holliston back on January 5th. The game was their first game after the holiday break. Julia Canestrari, Michaela Pucci, and Ivy Goglin finished the game with double digits in the points section as the Hillers cruised past Holliston 43-23. Following the win at Holliston, the Hillers girls took on Medfield on the road and lost 54-38. The Hillers girls responded nicely the following game, however, against Bellingham. Reagan Chiavani hit a trifecta 
of three-point field goals in the first half. Goglin dominated from the low post as the Hillers cruised past Bellingham 61-31. to The Hillers boys basketball team took a tough loss at home against Medfield 77-67. They followed up with a road win against Bellingham, however. The Hillers are now 3-5 on the season overall. A couple other Hillers sports notes to tell you about. Boys and girls indoor track each picked up a win against Holliston last week. The Hillers boys are now 6-1 on the season, while Hillers girls track is an undefeated 7-0. You can check out full Hiller Sports broadcasts and more highlights on our website, hcam.tv, or by heading over to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash hcamtv. Towards the end of Hopkinton's 300th anniversary celebration last year, the Hopkinton Middle School Drama Club performed in an original play called It All Starts Here, a celebration of Hopkinton. In case you missed it, here's a look. As part of the Hopkinton 300th anniversary, Hopkinton Middle School presented a Hopkinton-themed theatrical performance called It All Starts Here. The play was broken into three acts. The play depicts some of the history of migration to Hopkinton, while telling the story of a family moving to Hopkinton on the eve of the Boston Marathon. If you missed the performance, no fear, keep an eye out for it on our HCAM channels. We've had a busy month of programming here at HCAM. Next up is Courtney with our HCAM Insider to tell you what to expect. Hello everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, January 16th at 12 p.m., it's swimming and diving versus Tingsboro. At 3 p.m., it's ice hockey versus Bellingham. On Monday, January 18th at 7 p.m., Kate Chadbourne shares her love of poetry through storytelling, poems, and song on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Up came the three drops, and they were almost landing on Avagdi's head when <laughs> Guyenbach pushed him out of the way, and whack, the three drops landed on his head. Now instantly, he knew everything. On Tuesday, January 19th at 6.30 p.m., the boys' basketball team takes on Norton, live on HCAM Ed. At 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, January 20th at 11 a.m., Maureen Duenel's years of being town treasurer and collector are celebrated at her retirement party. At 8 p.m., Rob Davis recalls how he became pastor of the Vineyard Church on a new All About Hopkinton. I made this deal with you that if you made it really specific out of the Bible, uh, I'm going to 
you know, spend my life uh, pursuing you and, and, and doing what you asked me to do. On Thursday, January 21st at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Friday, January 22nd at 6.30 p.m., it's boys basketball versus Dover Sherborne, live on HCAM TV. And of course, we have so much more HCAM programming to offer. To find out more, just visit hcam.tv slash newsupdates to sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. You can also sign up for our daily news updates to keep up with town events. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and thanks for tuning in.